costume, Stephanie here, Ms. Oso Crafty. Welcome back to my channel, or hello if you're new. It's been a while, and I missed you guys. <laughs> so today is April 8th, and what I'm going to do is basically a review of March and the first week of April. I've got whips, I've got a couple finishes, and I have some haul. <laughs> I had a birthday, so I had some gifts, and there's a lot to share. So let's get started. So we're just gonna go in chronological order, and I'm gonna use my little bullet journal for um, reference. So March started with a, a gift project, which I'm not going to share, but then I moved on to the Lord's Prayer, which let me grab. So this is the Lord's Prayer by Stony Creek. I will insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like, what it's finished, and a picture of what it looked like before. So I have worked on it, I think, nine days since you saw it last. And so I worked on it like three days at the beginning of, or eight days, I don't know. I worked on it at the beginning of March, and then I worked on it during my bonus days, the 29th, the 30th, 31st of March, and then I worked on it a little bit the first week of April too. So this is stitched on Touch of Ecru. I guess it's Monaco, and I by Stony Creek. And uh, basically what I did is I just, well, I worked up and down from the middle pretty much. So I did this like water pattern and then this flower pattern. There's supposed to be little doves in between each of those, but I haven't done it yet because I needed that blending filament to do it. And then I did this band pattern here and these two flowers and the uh, verse, and I worked the, um, the borders up. So I am, you know, near the top. There's just one more line to go. Our father, of course, up here. And then there's going to be like a um, big uh, dove or something up here, and then more border. And then on the bottom, I worked down below the sheep, so lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then the butterflies, which are mirrored on each side. And this band pattern, which is not finished, there's some silver or gray stitches that need to go in there. And then I started the, uh, the last bit of the... Uh, text for so and then I worked the um the borders down so I did finish the side borders at the bottom and then there's going to be like a bottom border that sort of goes in between so this is coming along and I'm very pleased with it it's a lot of fun to stitch the little motifs and the Band patterns are kind of boring, but the text goes really fast, you know, it was just backstitch and I like the colors a lot. They're all sort of like natural colors, but they're not boring either. So it's a lot of fun to stitch. And I decided to um, switch things around a little bit. Um, and I'm going to try to finish this in May next month and Water Goddess will be delayed. All right, so after that, I worked on the uh, Enchanted Mermaid. So I will insert a pic of what it's supposed to look like and what it looked like before. So I gave this like five days. This is stitched on my my own hand dyed Monaco. The cover is actually pretty good there. I have a very difficult time photographing this. The camera always wants to wash it out, saturate the blue. But uh, yeah, there it is. So that's basically you know her her knees. <laughs> she had knees, <laughs> and that's the end of her tail there. Her like curls around. It's weird and patchy looking because there's a lot of beads to be put in there and a lot of crinic as well. So I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. 
I probably should though, at least in front of <laughs> the, This is a lot of fun to stitch. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous colors. They're not really coming out here very well, but they're just beautiful aqua blues, basically, with a touch of gray and black, so. Yeah, very fun project. I might say it's my favorite whip now. And then after that, I worked on Spooky House, my X's and O's, or Boot Club rather. Yeah, I worked on Boot Club by Lizzie Kate. So I will insert a pic of what it's supposed to look like when it's done. Here is my current progress. Basically what I'm doing is just one word a month. So March was black cat and I worked on the border as much as I can. So I worked on this uh, three days to just do that little black cat line. There was a lot going on at the time and I was rather distracted. So I just, I just was pretty much one of those days I only stitched like 15, 20 minutes or something. So. Yeah, but this is a uh, this is coming along. It's a lot of fun to uh, stitch. I'm using 32 count Belfast in the color Dirty, and I think it's perfect for this piece. It was the one that was it was called for. It was one of the uh, suggested fabrics. So yeah, it's a lot of fun to stitch. Quite a change of pace from some of my bigger ones. <laughs> Speaking of which, one of the bigger ones. I will get into my spooky house now. So. I only gave this two days in March. We'll insert a pic of what it's supposed to look like and what it looked like before. Stitching this on 32 count Belfast in the Thunderstorm colorway by Vintage Silk Weaver. So. Sorry for all the park threads. This thing has a crazy number of color changes. <laughs> so what I did is I worked on the moon. I'm using Petite Treasure Braid for this, PP10. And I worked it across the page break to where it comes up to the tree trunk over here. And I worked on the, um, the grass at the bottom and the gravestone, that's a gravestone. It's not quite done. There's some stitches that are supposed to be done on the side as like shadow. And one of the blends, haven't gotten around to that part yet. And the grass is done, a lot of it's done in half cross for a more delicate appearance. I tell you, it was nice to work on those greens after all this like gray, gray, whatever. <laughs> so this is, uh, it's coming along. It's definitely uh, slow going. So I'm trying to, kind of giving myself a break with this piece because my plan was to give it, you know, four days a month up until October, which would be 40 days total. And after I started it in January, I was like, well, that's not going to be enough time to finish. So, <laughs> and then in March, you know, things got busy. So I have my, you know, my six day rotation or whatever to do, or five day, or whatever it is to work on. Boot Club and Spooky House, and since it took, you know, three days to finish Black Cat, then I only had, like, a certain amount of time left over for Spooky House, because I wanted to stay, you know, on my rotation as much as I could, so. And since it's not a finished school this year, I'm not, like, too fussed about getting a certain amount of progress every time I work on it, so. But, you know, it is really pretty, and I do look forward to working on it every month. And maybe one day in the not too distant future, I'll be able to finish it. All right, and then I worked on um, my spring bird piece. So I gave it like several days in uh, March, and then I gave it a few more days in early April, and I finished it. So here's my finish. This is the Bright and Beautiful Spring Bird Blue Tip by Leslie Tier. It was published in an old uh, Cross Stitch Collection magazine. You can also get it as a PDF on her website. So this took 
14 days total since I started it last May, like in Mania. Really glad I finished it before Mania came around again. <laughs> it's stitched on 32 count antique white Belfast. And I love it. <laughs> it took a little bit longer than I anticipated just because, well, the part that's stitched, I mean, it's almost full coverage, as you can see. So it's basically like a full coverage area, and then there's a border that goes around it. And there's a lot of back stitching, a lot of color changes. I really like this um, bicolor pansy right there, that one. That's cool. And I like these blue bells. Those are nice down there. And the bird, of course. That's a lovely detail on that little bird. It's a blue tit, which is a Eurasian bird. And I, I didn't really realize that until, you know, I, after I started stitching the thing. So I live in North America. I've never, there's no blue tits that uh, hang out <laughs> up here. The birds that we get most commonly are like uh, bluebirds and cardinals and wrens and stuff like that. I think there is actually a wren in one of these patterns. This is part of a series. So there's, this is the spring one and then there's, you know, the other three seasons. I do intend to stitch them all. I had like a um, fat quarter of this fabric and I cut it up very carefully into quarters. So <laughs> this is a quarter, uh, a sixteenth, I guess. And uh, I have another three sixteenths that I can work with to do the other three seasons. But And I know that I could start another one like in Mania or something, but I don't know. I mean, this is pretty fussy, you know, <laughs> as far as like small patterns go. It's gorgeous, but I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to start another one just yet. But I do really love it. And this one, the back stitching was just, I mean, back stitching is always, usually it's like magical, but in this case, it, it really brought the piece to life. All these like fuzzy floral elements just became beautiful, distinct flowers and I love the background too, like the little, um, the field and the little trees and hills and whatever in the background. That's cool. Spring bird. And this was actually the first um, piece I've ever uh, stitched by Leslie Tear. And I must say, I do appreciate her design aesthetic and I would certainly like to stitch more of her pieces. I mean, not just like the rest of the series, but she has some other really nice ones too. She has this unicorn pattern. It's really nice. It's like a white unicorn frolicking on a dark blue. <laughs> and then, let's see. Well, maybe I'll show you my other finish now. So I finished this at the end of, I finished King Arthur's Court <laughs> at the end of uh, February. And I did insert a, I did make a clip <laughs> to show it on like close up and it's eight minutes long. I'm sorry, I guess I just couldn't shut up about it. So I'm gonna insert it here. Hey Floss Tube friends, I wanted to share my big February finish, King Arthur's Court by DMC. So I finished this on February 25th. It took a total of 46 days of effort after I started it in uh, January of 2017. It took a lot longer than I ever expected. <laughs> but it is my, it was my favorite whip and even before that it was kind of like my holy grail project because I saw the uh, piece on Facebook and I immediately fell in love. But I quickly realized that the pattern was out of print and not so easy to obtain. And I looked and looked and looked. <laughs> Eventually I got lucky on the 123 Stitch message board. So there's a lot going on in this piece. As you can see, it's quite a busy design and I did shoot, choose white for it. The fabric I stitched on is Jovelin. I actually ordered Belfast, but when I started working on this, I, I sent the uh, picture to Annette, you know, Annette's Acre from Floss Tube. She's stitching this too, and and she was like, yeah, that doesn't look like linen. And I realized she was right, that's not linen. You can see it's an even weave. I think it's Jovelin. 
It doesn't have as much body as Lugana and is very soft, rather flimsy. So, yeah, it's definitely an even weave. I love the uh, dragons. I think they turned out really cute <laughs> with the little red tongue and everything and all the detail with their claws. I actually added some fractional stitches in that area so the back stitch lines would be neat. I added fractional stitches all over the pattern, pretty much wherever back stitch appeared because they weren't charted and the back stitch lines in many cases would just cut right through the stitch and I thought it looked messy so yeah, I'll show you the, uh, the bottom border, so the, the dragon with the little gold vines and everything. And the crest. I love that crest in the middle with the uh, sparkly gold goblet. More crest. And then the other dragon, which is mirrored, my initials. So on this side we have the uh, tall ship sailing off into the sunset, sunrise, sunset, whatever. I think that's pretty cool. There's so much to romance, I think, in that idea. <laughs> and Lancelot is carrying that huge flag that's draping over the tableau. And then over here, we have the castle, Camelot, I suppose. Nighttime scene with the moon, and that turned out pretty good, the stars. There's a little thread. There we go. Take that off. <laughs> yeah, so close up on the uh, tall ship. Love the rich reds that were used in this. Really pretty colors. Yeah, so there's a true rainbow of color <laughs> used in this piece, and that made it really fun to stitch. So there's Lancelot. I love his helmet with the metallic and the feathers and everything. Maybe Guinevere gave him one of those flowers. <laughs> and look how detailed his armor is. Isn't that cool? <laughs> and his tabard with the uh, cross and his red cape and everything. And his sword tucked behind his back. Of course, Guinevere is in between Lancelot and Arthur. I did make a modification on her. I converted her hair to platinum blonde. She was charted with black hair. And you know, per the legend, Guinevere is blonde, so. Yep, <laughs> she's got that long, long hair dangling all down her front <laughs> and white flowers in it. Yeah, as the pattern was charted, it was like black hair with, I think the flowers were in 928 and I, I did the flowers in 928, even after I stitched her hair blonde, it didn't look good. It was too like grayish looking, so I frogged it and redid it in white. And she has little like metallic um, highlights on her, like her belt and her uh, crown, of course. And, and then there's Arthur, of course. He's got this gorgeous, uh, shield look at that with the lightning pattern and everything and the border and metallic and he is the tallest of the crew as you may notice <laughs> he's got a really nice crown too and then i love his pose how he's holding the shield the uh, sorry the sword aloft like that cutting through the border maybe that's excalibur the, sh the uh, sword i think that's really cool Back stitching that armor, you can see it a little bit there on Arthur's sleeve. You can see it more on Lancelot. That was that took a while. <laughs> that was quite intensive back stitching. Um, just a lot of little stitches, you know. And then there's Merlin. He's uh, Arthur's right hand man, of course. <laughs> Love his outfit. Oh my gosh. Those are my favorite colors. The green, the blue, the purple. I love that so much. And I think his outfit is nicer than Guinevere's. <laughs> but, uh, and look at that beard. Wow. Long, long beard. I guess they weren't too big on haircuts back then. <laughs> I think his hat turned out really nicely with the 
backstitch stars and shapes and all that. It's on his cape too. Stars and circles and triangles and whatnot. And then the um, you can see the uh, the background pattern. So that's all. As the pattern says, to do it long stitch in one strand and. From the picture, you can tell it's clearly two strands, and also they stitched the model on Ada. So I tried it with two strands. Uh, I didn't like it. Um, I liked it better with one strand, but it, it was really tricky to get uh, neat and everything without leaving like visible holes in the fabric. What I wound up doing was uh, couching it at the intersection of all the diamonds, and it looks a little funky now because it's just laying down on a white board, but once it's, you know, pulled and mounted at tension and everything, it'll it'll settle down. <laughs> it'll be right. And then the top. So we've got these two like cute little birds. And the crown. Actually a crown on each side. Yeah. And then, you know, the words King Author. So I really like the letters, the K. And the A, those are illuminated letters, like from the Book of Kells. I think that's really cool. So, yeah, it was kind of frustrating trying to finish this project in the end because I felt like every time I looked at it, I would find like a few stitches that needed to be filled in or something. <laughs> I think I got them all now, though. I hope so, anyway. It looks complete, so. And there is a mistake. A couple of these little um, squares in the wallpaper pattern are misspaced, but I didn't think it was worth frogging. I don't think you can really tell unless you went at it with a ruler or something. <laughs> All right, so that is King Author's Court by DMC and my favorite whip is now a finish. All right, see you back in the main video. Okay, welcome back. So at the end of um, March, beginning on March the 23rd, I started working on my Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh 2 by MCG Textiles, which I will insert a picture of what it's supposed to look like when it's finished and a picture of what it looked like before. So what I did is I finished up um, this page here, which was just like um, a few ninja stitches and some stitches with blending filament. And then I did two columns down here and reached the bottom corner. That was nice. It was fun to work with. It was bright red and pink and the blue was Bluebell's colors. The only thing is this whole area is just going to be covered in a plethora of French knots. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Pretty much like solidly covered and I don't mind French knots, you know, but uh, it's going to be a lot. <laughs> and I'll do it, uh, you know, towards the end of the project because I don't like having French knots wound up in my scroll. So this is coming along. I'm not quite making as much progress as I was on it last year because last year what I what I was doing it was doing was giving it like a weekend every month and I'm giving it, you know, two days a month in this year, but they don't necessarily fall on a weekend, so I don't necessarily get as much stitchy time. <laughs> so basically what I'm shooting for is um twelve hundred a month. Last year it was more like eighteen hundred a month. So if I can get 1,200, I'm happy that uh, qualifies me for the by the numbers sal and the full coverage fanatics group. So this pattern it's uh it's out of print now. I think MCG Textiles is no more. And this one, I mean, I'm using the pattern, but I substituted the fabric and the floss at the DMC conversion. So. Yeah. It's a really nice pattern. The um, materials in the kit left a lot to be desired though, which is why I did my substitution. So. That's Winnie the Pooh. 
And then on the uh, 25th of March, I moved on to my Christmas village. And the piece that I was working on was the, uh, the general store. Which is this one here. General store. This one required a lot of like fussing <laughs> because of me, because I'm picky. So there was this like thing on the porch. I don't know what it was. It looked like a black hole. It might have been like a coal chute or something. I got rid of it. I just extended the um, the wall and the floor in that area. <laughs> and then the other thing was this tree up here. It was uh, too tall. It was coming up way too close to this building above it, which is the, the toy shop. Apparently, I missed something when I did my calculations and made my little diagram. So. <laughs> Basically what I did is I just uh, frogged it back and made it so it was, you know, shorter and smaller, but I still wanted to make it look organic, so hopefully I did an all right job. Right, so I did work on this three days and I finished it. I finished it pretty early on day two actually, and I did more of the um, snowflake border on both sides. And let's see, what were my favorite um, details? Well, oh yeah, another mod I made is these um, the poles on the uh, porch. They were supposed to be done with red beads, and I didn't like that because the apothecary next door has the red and white striped poles. So I found some beads in my stash and this sort of like turquoise color that I thought coordinated well with the walls. I do really like the um, the bows. The beaded bows on top of the uh, poles. Now those are like six bead loops and it doesn't say in the directions but what I did is I just tacked down the loop on each side to make like a bow shape. I think that's preferable to just having like a jumble of beads you know. <laughs> and I do really like the, um, the wreath on the top floor with the big red bow and the uh, the weather vane up here. That's cute. I like that a lot too. I wasn't really all that crazy about the colors when I finished it, but in the context of the whole village, I think it, it looks fine. Here it is. Um, what's that? Uh, five buildings so far. My goal for the year is to do another three. The next one will be the uh, cathedral, and that's going to be next door to the general store below the bookseller. I already got like a little baby start on the tree. <laughs> and I'll be doing that on the, uh, the 25th of this month, the 25th of April. So it was good to finish that. So between the um, finishing this and the spring bird and everything, I'm down to nine whips, <laughs> single digits. Woo <-hoo. laughs> That's really cool. Um, that's a very comfortable place for me, but I will be going back up to like 15 pretty soon here for Mania. So I don't know. I have to look at Mania. Like my understanding was Mania is. You know, 15 starts or 15 riders or whatever, the first 15 days of May, but it seems like everybody's talking about 18 days, 18 starts or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm up for the 18, regardless of if that, even if that is how it's being done this year, I'm not going to do that because where does it end? You know, <laughs> every year, you know, we have, it's 2018, it's going to be 2019 next year, 2020 after that. Are we going to start 19 projects next year, 20 projects next year? Are we going to start 50 projects in another 30 years? I mean, come on, you know? You have to, like, draw a line somewhere, and I draw it here at 15. <laughs> so my plans for Mania, well, I'm not going to, like, get too much into that. I, I will film again before, like, the end of April and show you what I have planned for Mania, but... If I have nine whips, then I'm going to need to start, well, six, right, to bring me up to uh, 15.
and general store, Lord's Prayer, Lady Mandala. Okay, so I have one more project to show you. This is the um, Mini Mandala Sal by Boduros Bresson. So this I'm stitching on 22 Monaco. Go downstairs and see Daddy. Anyway, okay, so this is the March edition down here. I decided that, well, it's probably crazy, but the uh, all the designs were released. Like, um, not all the designs, but a picture was released of all the designs when the whole thing started, and I decided which order that I wanted them to go in, like based on uh, the elements of the designs, like I tried to match them to the months or whatever. Go so like this one I thought was Christmassy, so I decided to put that in the uh, December slot, basically. And this was the first one, January, and this was the second one, February, which I like because the February one Reminded me of like a snowflake and rather sparse, you know, like February, <laughs> the shortest month of the year. <laughs> Around here, it's a uh, cold and pretty uh, dreary. <laughs> so basically, what I'm doing is like a, uh, a color progression from the gray to the black. So there's going to be another two shades of gray in between. This is my little um, gritting. <laughs> so basically what I did is I just gritted out the corner of each block. Hopefully that'll be enough to go on. I think it will be. So this is a lot of fun to stitch. It's just like, it takes a day, you know? I haven't even looked at the, uh, the April one yet. But that'll be fun to do on the 28th of April. All right, that's it for my whips and my finishes and all. So I guess what I could do now is show you my, my haul. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So this is kind of a lot of haul because it does date a couple months back. I think my last regular update was the um, uh, end of January or so, beginning of February, it was before the Suchi Olympics and I did vlogs for the Suchi Olympics. I didn't show, share any of the haul that I got during that period of time in February on the vlogs. So here we go. This is from Stash and Load. I actually forgot about this until I saw it in my pile. It is the cross stitcher from August 2010. It has this beautiful Joan Elliott angel on the cover. This is nice. America the Beautiful from Sea to Shining Sea. I like that. Here's another picture of the angel. She is gorgeous. Really pretty. This is nice. Pretty idea. Beautiful. That is by Ursula Michael. This is cool. Hair, it's by Lois Winston. That one's nice. And then this is the other magazine they got on Session Load, Cross Stitch Gold. This is October 2013. I'm trying to think why I bought this one. It might have been the Joan Elliott Picnic in Summer. Love that, kind of a Victorian scene, although the, there's something kind of weird about the faces, like they're too pale or, I don't know, it might just be the photography. This is pretty. This is Leslie Tear, pretty petals on polka dot fabric, it's pretty cool, roses. Rose cushion. This 
one is nice. Doreen Jones, Calla Lilies. I think those are beautiful. Although it looks like it'd be pretty boring to switch that background. A lot of green, pale green. That's about it, I guess. This one I, I like too. The Heavenly Henna. This is also by Doreen Jones. Those are cool. All right, that's it for the magazines. And then I did get something on eBay. This is St. Francis of Assisi by Donald Vermillion Bianca. It's the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, all that. This is a fairly terrible photo, but I think this is an incredible pattern. It's gorgeous, and I love that prayer. Look at the floss list. A little bit long, huh? Look at the backstitch instructions. There's only like 12 of them, maybe. <laughs> it's 194 wide by 198 tall. Suggested 14 count or 28 count fabric. I have to look at it and see if it has um, fractional stitches, which I'm sure that it does. I would definitely be stitching it on 28 count or something so that is gorgeous very special pattern look how cute those little deer are and all the flowers and the statue cool 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 and then i went to the uh the lns with my friend samira hi samira for our uh they had a super bowl sale i think it was and i got a few things this pattern which i had my eye on for a very long time. It's Sue Hillis Tools of the Trade, and it comes with a little um, gold coins. My son is into pirates and everything, so I thought that would be fun to stitch for him. And then this other one, Cross Wing Collection Flower Power number 28. I had my eye on this for a long time. This pattern is a bargain. I mean, the price tag is 16 and I paid like, everything was like 25% off, so it was only like 12 or whatever. And this thing is like 100 pages long. I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's huge. And like all the uh, little critters and the butterflies and the insects and all that, all that's done over one. And the birds, so. Yeah, really huge pattern. It's 574 by 330, 340 stitches. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> I'll have to get a really pretty hand dyed fabric, maybe like green on the bottom and blue on the top for this. Maybe I'll even try to do it myself. And then the other thing I got at the LNS that day was the Berry Collector by Nora Corbett. Jesse, Jesse Marie, if you're watching this, I blame you because I saw I saw her stitching like the um, skirt section at one of our meetups and the greens were like incredibly beautiful. So <laughs> I had to have it. And then that brings me to the, well, I had a birthday and um, my friend Louise sent me this gorgeous fabric. It's a Sparkly's Tropicana um, Balthast Opalescent. Really beautiful. I love it. And I think it would work very well for her. So, and then also in that lovely generous package from Louise. She sent me lots of like hand dyed thread. Like this is Silks for You Peacock. Isn't that pretty? I like this one a lot. This is Twilight Shadows by Crafty Kitten. This is um, Crafty Kitten Sunrise. And this is Jottery Designs Bright Lights. Jottery Copacabana and Crafty Kitten Evening Skies. 
That was such an awesome gift, and she included a beautiful card. I'll be right back. So this was the um, the card that Louise sent. Isn't that pretty? Happy birthday, Peacock. Oh, I love it with the cherry blossoms and everything. So this, I will have to stitch a peacock someday. I really love, I love peacocks and uh, I think this is a beautiful card. And thank you so much for that lovely, generous gift, Louise. I love everything. <laughs> and I am thrilled to have a sparkly fabric. I have long wanted to try you know, some of the UK hand dyers, and now I have my first piece. <laughs> I loved it so much, I immediately had to go online and look at uh, the sparkly site, and she's got a lot of really pretty colors. And then I got another present from Emily, Eclectic Possessions. She sent me this awesome card, the Tree of Life. I love that and a mommy bag. <laughs> How cool is that? Look at this fabric. It's got knights and castles, lords and ladies, horses, forest, uh, water, drawbridge, moats, this is so cool. I've never seen anything like it. Thank you so much, Emily. I love it. I don't know where you found this fabric, but it's so awesome. It's totally me, and I love the color that she paired it with, this grayish black one with the, the lace. Oh, it's so pretty. And it's lined in a paisley. So, I love this. Thank you, Emily. Very special present. And then I got some, well, this was from Melissa at uh, MJ Hand, MJ Makes Handmade, one um, Insta and Etsy, I think. So she sent me this Gorgeous pattern, the gold collection, Garden of the Sea. I think that's really pretty. And she also included this little summer rose card kit. I love that little uh, card with the yellow and the roses and everything that was included. Thank you, Melissa. That was a really nice uh, present. And then I got some fabric from Hand Dyed by Steph that was actually, I had ordered it um, like on Black Friday sale and it came around Valentine's Day. Okay, I'm back. So the uh, fabric from Hand Dyed by Steph, it's all, um, I think it's all 32 linen. This is chocolate milk, really nice neutral. And then this one is Jello Shots. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Crazy bright. I love it. I'm going to stitch a vampire on there. All this stuff that I got was for Halloween patterns. And then this one is Harvest Pumpkin. How gorgeous is that? Wow, really pretty orange. So I think I just got Fat Ace. Yeah, I think I got Fat Ace of all of them. So those are really nice, and I'm looking forward to uh, stitching on those. Although maybe not anytime soon, since the uh, <laughs> spooky house thing, the spooky house project is uh, a little more than I thought it would be, you know? It's gonna take a while to finish that. And I have the blue club on the go, so probably not gonna be starting anything else Halloween related this year. <laughs> those two will keep me busy for a while. And then the other thing I wanted to do was last time I did a 
um, Floss 2 regular update, I announced a giveaway and I wanted to draw the, uh, the winner. So I'm going to do the YouTube comment picker. That's the uh, my video URL. So let's start the raffle and see what we get. There's 246 unique commenters. Start raffle with a random winner. The winner is Expat Atlantic Stitcher. And her favorite color is blue. So congratulations, Expat Lank. Um, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> so please uh, get in touch with me and um, I will get some info from you, like what you like to sit on, that kind of thing, and I will put together a, um, a box of goodies for you. So you can find me um, on Facebook and uh, in the Stitch from Sash group on the admin and the Stitch from Sash 2017 to 18 group. And you can send me a message on YouTube or whatever. You can also find me on Instagram, on Insta, I am Ms. Oh so Crafty. That's all one string, so I'll just put it up here. All right, that's it for my um, stitching. But if you want to see my knitting, I could show you the top that I'm wearing. So hang on a sec while I move the camera. So this is a pattern called uh, Lorelei. It's by Tonya Berry. It's from the Twist Collective Fall 2009 issue. I knit it in uh, Knit Picks Gloss DK in the uh, Admiral Blue colorway. It's like about um, 1,100 yards. Knitted on US 4 needles for the 34 inch bust size. It took three weeks to knit and then Sat around for a while before I seamed it. <laughs> so the the pattern was fine. Good clear charts. The row gauge was an issue. Um, and then the buttonholes I put on the wrong side, but you know, it doesn't really matter. So <laughs> I really like this yarn, the Knit Picks Gloss. It's like a wool silk blend, you know, and it's it's warm but not too warm and it's soft and the back view, the side view. So the thing with this is it has like the, the lace pattern. So the lace on the chest and also on like the um, the bottom of the body. So that was fun to stitch. And this was, um, you know, nice like Spring, winter sweater type thing. <laughs> it's actually pretty cold today, <laughs> like in the 40s, so <laughs> definitely sweater weather. Okay, I'm back. So I just will tell you briefly what I plan to do the rest of April. So right now I'm working on the water goddess, which is, she's in the middle of the rotation, so I'm saving it for next time. <laughs> and then after that, I will rotate to the boot club and spooky house. And then I'm planning to work on Charm Santa as well. And then Winnie the Pooh, the Mill Hill Christmas Village, starting the new piece, the um, cathedral, and then the mini mandala. And then I'll have my two bonus days at the end of the month, which I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them. I might work on the Lord's Prayer again, because I do have, wanna finish that next month. And then it will be May and Mania. <laughs> So my plan is to come back and film at the end of April and show you what I've done the rest of this month and give you a little preview of my Mania starts. And I do want to do a vlog during Mania. So might even do two, like one for each week. I don't know. We'll see. So that would be fun. And I just wanted to thank everybody for watching. Thank you for taking time out of your day. And <laughs> Thank you so much for all the lovely comments and the likes and 
this is such a wonderful community. I'm really happy to be part of it. I am grateful to every one of you. And Floss Tube is a wonderful thing. <laughs> so I'm sorry that it, it was such a long time since I filmed last time. It just, things got pretty busy and we had spring break and we had Easter and <laughs> there was just uh, a lot going on. I do spend uh, quite a bit of time these days doing my uh, physical fitness. Um, doing this program called Body Boss. It's like a high intensity interval training thing. So yeah, it's really good and I love it. <laughs> But it definitely does take time away from stitching, so, but that's, I mean, that's fine. That's kind of what I was seeking this year. I wanted more balance in my life, so I am grateful to trade the stitchy time for more physical fitness and <laughs> losing weight and getting stronger and all that stuff, so that's good. <laughs> all right, I will see you guys in a couple weeks. Take care. Bye.